Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back here on FanDuel TV. Uh, quick intros. Lou Will's back. Woohoo! We traded him though because Shams is now <laughs> out. Uh, shout out to Shams who's not feeling well today. Chandler P, very dependable. For mm -hmm. Three days a week, he can guarantee you. He <laughs> um, but we do have a lot of basketball to get to. There's so much going on in the world today, but we will concentrate on just. Do we that. have to? <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot we want to talk about. Uh, Celtics at Hawks. This is I, I don't know what to do with it. The Hawks were down 30, come back and beat Boston. DeAndre Hunter with 24, Dejounte Murray with 19 and 15. Tatum had 37 and eight rebounds. But it's the largest comeback win for the Hawks in team history. The nine-game win streak for Boston. Now snapped. Um, how are you up 30 and lose like this? Yeah, it's tough to do. And if I wouldn't be so concerned if this hadn't happened before. Right. And March 5th against the Cavs, the Dean Wade game, <laughs> they were up 20, smoked it. Uh, there was a game earlier against Milwaukee where they were up 20. They end up still winning the game, but blew the lead. This is this is becoming a trend where they don't have that killer instinct. They don't step on the gas when they're up. And it's a sign of maturity to me, and that's not a trait that you want or you need to have as a championship team. And we can look on the other side, too, that they got the number one seed locked up. They're not sure. really playing for anything. They're trying to get healthy. They missed Drew Holiday and Derek White last night. So you could chalk it up, but they still had enough on the court to be up 30, to be spotted 30 points. 30. With 30 or so minutes left to play, it's an inexcusable loss. And again, it's I would love to see Tatum, who did have a great game. He had 37 and 8. Uh, Jalen Brown played great, but this speaks volumes on their depth. When they have one or two or three guys missing, they don't have a lot. So if those guys, their starting five, aren't elite mm -hmm. and they don't literally carry the team for 48 minutes, things like this happen. This does not bode well for the playoffs that are right around the corner. I mean, <laughs> Jason Tatum said that they effed the game. Up. I, I, he just read off a list of other times that they've done that. Is this the worst loss? What I mean, I don't know which one to call the worst loss. Yeah, it probably it's probably gonna sting, you know, especially when you're up 30. Like a 15-point lead, a 20-point lead, 30 is a completely different realm of effing the game up. Like Jason Tatum said, I'm sure, you know, they have the number one seed locked up and all of those things, but I don't care what you're ranked, I don't care where you are in the season, drop a 30-point lead and lose on a road, it's gonna sting. So they'll have a lot to talk about. Uh, today. And oh. by the way, Boston didn't have their two guys, but Atlanta didn't have Sadiq Bay, right. Trey Young, Griffin, I mean, Johnson, like Akuma, so they right. didn't have anybody either, No stretch so. where they supposed to drop this lead. I don't care what no. was going on. Let alone what was the money line, like halfway through when they're down I think it got up to plus 5,000 or something. Ooh, it was crazy, crazy insane. money value. I never picked the right one. Well, no one. I think I don't think anybody took that. Somebody had. Right. I, I guarantee you one person. Somebody. Did. Somebody did. Some super fan. Old was like, like 10 bucks. Happened. Exactly. Ten bucks bigger stones than me. <laughs> well, 10 bucks, I mean, it's, it's worth it. Um, LeBron recently said that Steph <clears throat> Curry single-handedly changed the, quote, no lead is safe narrative. It's kind of the opposite of what we've been seeing in college. But you get up that big. Is he right? Like the no lead is safe? I'm disagreeing. Yeah. Okay. I'm, disagree I'm disagreeing with, with the single-handedly part. Okay. Now, Steph Curry and the Warriors, what they did was they were innovative. They did change the game. We, up until we saw those guys, we didn't see any team playing, you know, using the three-point line how they used it. They used the three-point line as a threat. You know, they were trading threes for twos. They were stopping in fast breaks, shooting three-pointers, kicking it out two for ones, two for a dollar, constantly shooting three-point shots, and they changed the game. Now, I can't recall a scenario where they were down a bunch of 15 and 20s where they had to use that as a tool. I thought they used that as something to blow teams out. You know, you look at the Hawks last night, they used the three-point line to their advantage. They shot 50% from the three, 18 from 36 from that line on 30 assists. You, you know, anytime you get 30 assists, you give yourself an opportunity to put a lot of points on the board. So. As far as Braun saying he single-handedly changed the no-lead is safe narrative, I don't agree with that, but, you know, they did do some damage. I think it's just, like, with the pace of play that teams are playing so fast, like you said, the three-point line, that and no one plays defense seems to I be mean, anymore. Fair. So if you go cold and you don't score for a four- to eight-minute stretch, you don't get to the foul line, you get no stops, yeah, a team can go, and they're going to take 12, 13 threes, and they make eight of them, they're right back in the game. So from that aspect, yes, I think the pace of play, the talent, the elite shooting, the amount of three points that are taken, it's easier to come back with that being said. But uh, again, like Lou said, the, the responsible single-handedly, I don't know about that, but it is true just because there's minimal defense and there's really well, good the, offense. Give the league credit. Ever since All-Star break, scores have been down. Me watching the game, knowing the game, been able to play the game for so long, I'm noticing they're letting a lot of stuff go 
that in in recent history they wouldn't. You know, the tic tac fouls and all of that. It seems like they've corrected some of that, and the games have been way more competitive. So yeah. give the league credit for correcting this. Uh, it was late in the fourth quarter. The Hawks announcers had a couple thoughts, uh, specifically about Jason Tatum. Boy, Jason Tatum does a lot of complaining. Who does he think he is, Caitlin Clark? Who do you think he is who? Wah, wah, Caitlin Clark. Uh, Thoughts? Oh, and by the way, yeah. does he need to stop complaining? I don't, That's... I don't. When it comes to complaining, Jason Tatum doesn't jump out to me. No, not my now, first. Listen, if you drop a 30-point lead and you're starting to, if you, you're up 30 and you're seeing that lead dwindle down and you think there are some things going on that, that has to do with the whistles, I can see him being a, a complainer last night, but he doesn't have a history of this, so. Yeah, like, Luca complains. Chris Paul Luca. complains. There's, there's other guys that I think of more than Jason, Jason Tatum. Tatum, but, again, this this announcer is paid by, by the Hawks. And what does he have against Caitlin Clark? Why well, that's, it's yeah. the topic. Why catch a stray? Why well, just... because on Saturday she was <clears throat> complaining in the game, and her dad was actually in the stands yelling at her to shut up and yeah. play. Okay. So it got to the point where, like, Pops was not happy with her. And he now like we're it. all on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Caitlin Clark said, and by the way, it's a good problem to have. Everyone's talking about it. I will it. say, it is exhausting, and I hate the whole, I hate the players at every play call. Go like this. Oh, yeah. It'll be five that. seconds in the game. And Especially like, when you know you're wrong. It's so stupid. It's, it's theater. It, it, it's also, it's, it's the more theater is, than everything. It's also sometimes the guy that, like, no one's looking at you for this. Yeah. Like, you're not going to get this one. Like, but and no one cares, really. No. It's it, a common style. Shoot your free throws. Let's keep playing. This seems like a little bit of hate from this guy, because I don't think of Tatum as a whiny guy. Like, I feel like he's not that guy. Draymond Green, like, that, sure, like oh, there's other guys yeah. where, like, I see it, but Tatum, I don't see it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess... Maybe, maybe this is a one-off. Maybe yeah. this is a personal beat. Let's take it as a one-off. Or, Tatum. hear me out, he might have just thought he had himself one hell of a funny line and was going to get it in somewhere. Yeah. And that's probably... Yeah, he rehearsed that in the shower. That's probably more of that yeah. than anything. He's like, I got one. Throw this cake with Clark. If one person complains, I'm going to it. didn't hit how he thought it hit, because I had no didn't clue slap. what he was talking did, about. It did, did not, not slap. Did not slap. <laughs> well, these two teams play again in Atlanta on Thursday. Weird scheduling. Um, moving on, Philly. Putting Sacramento. the house on the Celtics in that but, game, by the way. The house. That's, that's, wow, which house? That sounds that's scary to me. Point. Uh, Shibata Sabonis <laughs> <laughs> breaks the record. They uh, defeat the Sixers 108-96. He's got his 25th triple-double of the season. 54 straight double-double passes. Kevin Love for most since the merger. Mm. Um, afterwards, Mike Brown said, Sabonis should be in the MVP conversation. There's Caleb uh, wow. congratulating. I mean, look, he's his coach. The conversation, but, sure. But, okay. Yeah, how far are we taking this? I don't think the conversation should be about it. Ends, him. It ends now. There's no conversation. He's not. He's not winning MVP. <laughs> that was the whole not, conversation. Yeah, I don't yeah. think the conversation should be about him. But can we put him in there for the stats that he's put up? Sure. But you know, this is when we start having that conversation about does winning affect this, right? Because yeah. he's he's is he impacting the game more than Jokic for his team? Is he impacting the game more than SGA for his team? Jason Tatum is going to be in that conversation. If you take Luca off of the Dallas Mavericks. Who knows what shape they'll be in, even even having Kyrie. And so, do we put him in the conversation? Sure, but it's it's going to be a short one. I don't even want to put him in the conversation. And when you impact your team, you win games. He's not won a lot of games. They're in the seventh spot. They're in the play. -in. But Luca's in what? The, Luca's in what? The I don't eight? think he's going to win it either. I think it's but a runaway. It's, it's Jokic and in, SGA, and then maybe Tatum to me because winning is the most important thing when I think you're voting. So is Luca in the conversation? If if no is uh, Luca uh, sure do I want to say who could this argument no. you know Luca's no. in that conversation do I want to say <laughs> but sure. what's the conversation how big is this conversation that's what I mean is he the fourth option and for that's MVP what I would like to know. fine how like, long is this conversation doing five? right we're doing five he's people. not going to be we the runner up we were speaking about it off camera how many guys and if Joel Embiid would never got hurt he would be even then that would be lower yeah so no I don't think there's any conversation so we take Luca out of the conversation as well. Yeah, I don't talk. He's not gonna win MVP. <laughs> what are you doing? Get out of here. What's no, happening right confidence. now? <laughs> uh, my point is, I think this is gonna the whole. How, what do we talk about now? Underrated. We don't talk about. Yeah, it's we bonus. Talk about that. Now yep. we're not gonna not not talk about him again. You know what I mean? So I think this is gonna be a blessing in disguise for him, where he's now. Yeah, it took 25 triple doubles and it took all this this crazy run of double doubles for us to talk about him. But he's becoming now someone that we're talking about. He's now getting the flowers he deserves. Everyone knows that he should have made the All-Star team. He didn't. Yes. But now, I will say, he's got a chance at All-NBA. 
He'll make he All-NBA, which is more important, which is more money, bigger bonuses, everything for him than making the All-Star game. So Purely as a fan, I hope he's not in any conversation in the Sacramento Kings go into the postseason pissed off and they become very disruptive. The problem oh, is like the that. voting will be done already, so that won't even matter. They, which were, is overlooked, another they problem were overlooked too. at All-Star. He's not going to be in the MVP conversation. You said All-NBA. He might make that based on the I think stats. he'll make third-team All-NBA. I think he'll make third-team All-NBA. Okay. You... That 6-7 seed is good enough to do that. There's a lot of you know guys that are going to make it over him in the first team and second team. So I think his only shot would be Who's third team. Who's your updated MVP pick right now? It's not up. It's the same. It's always been. It's Jokic. <laughs> you staying there? That's up. Staying there. I'm still SGA. I like this for you no, guys. You're, you're just you're good. You're, you're just I've doubling said, down. Said, you're doubling yeah, down. You're just like tilt. you just did no, because you said <laughs> Luca's not in the MVP conversation, and you know good and damn well he is. He, sure, we can he talk shouldn't. about it, but he's not a real option. You I, wouldn't put any stock. You wouldn't I bet. You wouldn't S, pick I him think to SGA is the guy. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You don't think he does? I don't think he does. I think but it's like us thinking Chet still is the rookie of the year. It's cute. I know when you guys say it, I'm you like, know what I mean? oh, like, I, I want to, I want to be right, but we're probably not. You know, you're I'm not. Man enough 100% to admit, not right. Um, okay, so what was it? it? Was 54 straight double doubles? It's crazy. The uh, the record is Wilt with 227. Oh my dear God! God. He needs a uh, point game. What, let's give it a percent chance him getting there. Zero. Three. I, zero. Three. I don't. I don't think there's any way. By the way, you know how hard that is to not get like hurt or ejected or something and not finish with the double double. Like it's not. It's if he plays those games in a row. Yeah. He's gonna have an off night, right? Like that. How many? What is it? Would you say? Two twenty-seven. Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't I, even I'm, give I'm, him the, a point. I'm the guy that wants to challenge all records before 1975. Uh, well, you can. I'm. I'm not gonna harp. And why on is that? I just feels like you know it was. It was a time where you kind of had to. Spice things up to make it interesting. And I like, will this say is, this. this Wilt never nothing, like sprained his ankle. This has and nothing and went to out. do with Wilt personally. So before all the Wilt people come for me, I'm just saying. I, people. All of these stats are just funny to me. He lived a full life. He's had more sex than double doubles. This is that, <laughs> and there it is. I was hoping we'd get there, and I didn't even. He's had have more to partners. <laughs> Is that more That's partner? what I'm saying. He was a very active man and still a couple. How do we so get here? Yeah, I don't stamina know. is great. Well, we were going to talk He's about Diddy. Clearly he said in no. shape, All right. strong. Around the league. And he we... never did none of that, by the way. Come on, let's he get moving. He was not on a load management, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, Clippers. Man, what is going <laughs> on? 133-116. They lose to the Pacers. Six of their last nine are now L's. Uh, they've lost their last two by an average of 16 points. Yikes. And they've dropped to five in the West. Pelicans Eek. own that tiebreaker. Afterwards, Ty Lue said that the team was, quote, Ooh, soft. Lou, what do you think about those comments? My first thought is, um, this is, this is, this is where Russell Westbrook's impact ah, yes. is missed. You know, he's the guy that's going to bring that physicality. He's the one that's going to talk the trash, that's going to get him going. He's going to be their energy guy. And I don't know who's going to I don't know who's going to be the guy that's going to wear that hat for them with him being out. I think this is where his impact is missed the most. So T. Lou coming out and saying that, you know, they're soft. They're not playing with a lot of physicality. It's a Russell Westbrook thing for me. Yeah, and this, this is weird to me because this is an older team, right? This yeah. is an experienced team, this is a vet team that has extreme depth too so even and Russ came back last night he played 18 only played 18 minutes but like but he had 14 and he played but but again that is, he's kind of like the motor right so when he went out I think they had a little letdown which is crazy because they still have this big three that can explode yeah. and can go give you 30 points they still have the personnel to be a really good defensive team look at Paul George and Kawhi Leonard those are two of the great two-way players that can still defend and score points so this is a team that it's not like a team on the rise. This is a team that's built right now to win a championship. So when they have these skids like this, it's it's pretty concerning, especially now that they're, they don't even have home court right now to the Pelicans, who no one's talking about. Right. So it's definitely, again, and this is the time I think it's the most important time where after All-Star, before the playoffs, where teams kind of come together or they splinter and they go in different ways. This, seemed, this team right now, the Suns, teams like that, they seem to go in the other way than they should be. Isn't the whole point of this Clippers team the depth that we talk about that they have? And yeah. this doesn't... You know, one guy goes out, something weird happens. And I don't understand that, watching why you would be losing these. A lack of an identity is what Lou talked about as well. Not you, Ty Lou. And I don't know what the identity is. If you were to say the Clippers' identity is blank. That's a, I mean, that's an interesting point. Because for me, when you have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, James Harden, I would, I would say you're a high-powered offensive team. And on the flip side of that coin, when you have a Kawhi Leonard and you have a Paul George who I played with, and they took pride in defense. I've watched them argue over who's going to get a marquee matchup before games. Hmm. I don't know what the identity is of this team moving forward. 
I think it should be defense. I think it should be they should hold their they should hang their hats on playing defense and stopping teams. And you got plenty plenty enough guys to score the basketball, so it should be on the defensive end what they focus on. Yeah, I think this is their this is their problem that they don't have an identity. They're 18th in defensive rating. They, got, they should be top five. They should be top five. And offensively, they're fourth. So I think they have the capability and they have the, the team and the personnel to be top five in both. They're pretty much, they're the, one of the most complete teams when you look at offensive skill set, defensive guys, depth, coaching. They have it all. So it is, it kind of, it's mind boggling when you see a team like this with this much talent struggle like this, especially at this point of the season. Um, the Knicks played as well last night. This was, uh, I mean, it wasn't even entertaining at some point, but Dante DiVincenzo had 40, including 11 of 20 from three in the big win. Uh, Pistons coach Monty Williams criticized him for stat padding. Josh Hart responded by saying Monty should have told his guys to defend better. These are all valid points. Lou, whose side are you on? I am smack dead in the middle. What? That's not a thing. I hate no. that I disagree with you so much today. How are you not agreeing with an NBA player just making 11 threes in NBA? We're supposed to feel bad for the Pistons because they suck and can't right. play defense? So, again, he shot 23 pointers. So, him shooting seven in the fourth quarter isn't a surprise to me. He's going for it. He wants to see how many points he can get. So, I can see Money's point on that. And I also say, shit, guard me. Yeah, and by like, the way, do watch something about the tape. It. A lot of them, he's yeah. wide open. So yeah, do, do, some, like, do something about I've it. I've so. never heard a coach complain about somebody shooting and making this many it's a little threes. weird. Like, what? Yeah, like, he shot 50 from three. Double, yeah, he shot better than 50. Better than 50, yeah. Three, and he was wide open on more than half of them. So if you have a problem with it, adapt your defense, change your defensive principles, double team him, which is crazy to think you're going to double team Dante DiVincenzo. But if he's <laughs> the one that's pissing you off to where you're that upset that he's making threes, the guy made 11 threes in an NBA game. Like, buzz off. It's a he great game. He thinks it's probably not just about Dante. It's probably the season as a They've game. lost a lot worse than this, it's, and I've uh, never yeah. heard comments it's, like this of guys going. He got off. a lot of places he can he can spray his frustration it's a around. Long but what is this? He's mercy but, rule, like he said, uncle yeah. in this game for Dante DiVincenzo hitting 11 threes. This yeah. is whack. By the way, this Knicks team, I just hope they get healthy. It's gonna be fun. That's all. That's They're tough. My two cents. Um, Rockets. Good God, what's going on? They've won their ninth straight, uh, beating Portland 110-92. Now the longest win streak in the NBA right now. They are a half yeah. game back of the Warriors for the 10 spot. Dear Lord, Jalen Green State, wants up. to get. They really are like they're in trouble. Jalen Green had his 27, but he was nine of 26 from the field. You know, if we want to narrow it down to one dude on this team, Lou, where are you putting this? Kind you of give it to Jalen Green. Right. Since Ngoon has been out, they've played a, a brand of basketball that works for him. They're playing fast. They're playing up tempo, and, and and he's eating off of it. 9 for 26 and 9 for 27, whatever he was last night, he's going to have those type of games with the shot selection that he has. But he's playing at a high clip, and it's been working for him. So I, I'm going to give that, that credit to Jalen Green. Yeah, we kind of touched on this team. They're, they're playing so free. Where since Sengun went out, they didn't have expectations with Sengun. So now you put out arguably your best player for the season. You're kind of out of the play-in. These guys are playing loose. They're playing confident. Jalen Green has now found a way to be, except last night where he took 26 shots to 27 well. points. He's been efficient. He's shooting 45 <laughs> from the three, 52, I think it was, from yesterday from the field. So he's been getting to his spots, but he's been converting. He's been making these shots. He's been great. You know what you're going to get with Van Vliet. You know what you're going to get with Dylan Brooks. So for them to take that next step, we talked about yesterday, they're both up for an uh, extension. Are they like, are you going to pay both of these guys? That's your core going forward? They got to figure it out. Because that's all they kind of got. They got to figure like, it out. Obviously, it, they didn't, it didn't work together. So I mean, that's the weirdest part. Yeah, but, you know, uh, one underrated thing we're not talking about is they have no zero pressure on them. It's so easy to go out and compete at a high level when you don't have the expectations of being great on your side. Yeah. You know, I was on a Clippers team. We traded Blake Griffin. They thought it was over. I remember I told the guys, listen, play hard as you can, live with the results. Mm -hmm. And we end up going on a historic run. Mm -hmm. The Houston Rockets are on the brink of doing that. Sengun goes down. It's like, hey, what we got to lose? Let's just play hard. Let's see what happens. And it's been working for him. And How this, much of this is Yudoka? I mean, it's. I mean, he's a great coach. He, he's a great coach. And this is, again, this is a team the Rockets have with zero expectations. And it's a team the Warriors with all the expectations. Goodness. So it couldn't be two opposite ends of the spectrum here. And again, they're just playing. Do they play again? Do we know? I don't I can't look think that up so, that but yeah. I don't know. But I will say, we look at the schedule. The Rockets' schedule was extremely light during this stretch, and it's about to get, you know, oh, a lot they do. It's about to get Rocky They again. do play? Wait, did I just make that up? 
you probably do. Yeah, they play Thursday. But Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's and, like, and their schedule is going to get a lot harder. So we'll see. Listen, they have a chance. They're right there to make the plan. They got a shot. They've been through with their best player out. Last that's month, we impressive. said they had no shot. We said I mean, cooked. zero oh, yeah. shot a, a month ago. Not even, maybe three weeks. By the way, if the Warriors would just win half their games, this wouldn't even be a conversation. Wait, they is that keep, how this works? You've got to win yeah. the game? Yeah, yeah, you more games literally just got to. That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, good. Make sure I understood how this works. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> but we, we, nine game winning streak from the Houston Rockets. I mean, the best insane. player goes down, we nobody could predict. Would this. not have bet that one. Um, the biggest game of the night, obviously, though, is this next one. Suns. Oh, God. Here we go. Uh, 104 102. <laughs> Phoenix loses to San Antonio. There's no Victor Wembanyama out there. Uh, Katie and Booker combined for 65. Royce O'Neal, the only other Suns player in double digits. Afterwards, Frank Vogel called the loss, quote, unacceptable. That is just rude. How alarming would you say this loss is for this Phoenix team at this point in the season? It sucks when a loss is unacceptable. Like, that sucks. That's not a good look for San Antonio, Michelle. It's, but, uh, it's just. I mean, listen, no, the Suns full healthy their big three in the lineup and no Wembenyama and you smoke this game at this point in the season again this is what I'm talking about with the Clippers situation is this is when you kind of come together this is when you peak this is when you get that momentum into the playoffs and it seems like the Clippers and the Suns have kind of hit a snag where they're going the other way and they had good like I mean Durant had 29 Devin Booker had 36 but then you have Beal has an off night where he's four for 11 Grace Snell and Urkic so for them, I think they're still a scary team just because as a player, you know. Okay, but when are they going to start putting fear in somebody? If they're a scary team, when are they going to start putting pressure on these teams? I don't know, because a loss like this, again, I know it's a long season. It's you can't be perfect. It is you know they've lost three of the four, though, this it's, year to the Spurs. That is, and maybe, maybe we can chalk numbers. this Spurs up to a, their, to a Spurs might have their number. mismatch. But, again, like, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. It's, I think you fear this team if you draw them in the playoffs just because of on paper and you know what they can but do. But at this point. But now the film doesn't lie. Like, now if I'm yeah, playing them, it's like, all right, come on, guys. At this they're, point, they're, I, I, I'm not scared at all. Actually, I'm kind of looking forward to this matchup. <laughs> I'm still scared. Damn. I'm still scared. Sh- just I mean, we so should be. Listen, they're... we should be. But what I'm saying is, as a player, you know, you go through the progressions of a season, and you're like, man, I hate to match up with that team. I hate to match up with that team. As the season go on, you're like, you know what? It doesn't look so bad. Like Suns Timberwolves right now. Who you got? First round. You know what I mean? I can't just take the Timberwolves. Ooh, you know what I mean? That's take, scary. I can't just take the Timberwolves, but. Which is crazy. They they're unbelievable. They're 49 and 22. Anthony Edwards and they still can't take them because that team on paper, the Phoenix Suns, okay. is still terrifying. What about the, do any of these teams, Clippers, Suns, T Wolves, do any of them even pose a threat to the Nuggets? In your opinion, all of them do. Yeah, I do think they, they really? I think I think I think all of them do. They all can give them a battle. I think the Nuggets are the best team. I think they're the best starting five, and they have the best player. We're so. still talking about three teams that have. That's that's gonna finish the season with 50 plus wins. Your eighth place team is 42 and 30. It's just a weird year. It's a crazy year. Like it's a those, lot of success. Look at two through four right there: the Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Pelicans. Those are both great teams, and the conference is deep. Nobody fears those three teams. Nobody, and they're the second, third, and fourth ranked team in the Western Wait, Conference. I think I think today is the day we should. To- I fear I the Lakers more the than I fear the Timberwolves. Whoa. Right, like, and I, you know what and, I mean? Like, and we say that, and, and then we watch the progressions of the season, and we're like, yo, at this point, we should take these people completely. I know, it's crazy, because my eyes see the Thunder and the Timberwolves dominate every single night and continue to win, and I and keep yes. seeing the Suns go the other way. But again, we feel like that because the Because we've seen those players do it in the postseason exactly. before. We've never seen these cats do it. So I don't maybe, think that's I don't think I'm not, dis- I'm not disagreeing with, yeah, I'm not disagreeing with Chandler. It's just 70 games in, these teams are who they are. It's funny, like if the Timberwolves want to slide like this, I'd be like, ah, oh, they suck. So the you Suns like to do slide. it, I'm like, ah, oh, there's still time. So right now, that's that's the matchup, right? Who's number one again? I just missed it. Nuggets. All right. Well, Nuggets will beat the Suns. That's you, what I'm you saying. You wouldn't pick the Nuggets over the Suns? Yes, I would. There you go. Yes, I would though. Yeah, I would pick them over. But everyone. none of the other ones. And no, Oklahoma, no OKC, no Timberwolves, no Clippers. You like the Suns in all those matchups? <laughs> I it's just want to know, man. It's tough. Do you... I don't know. I got to see the health when it gets man, there. I'm not trying to hear that. Do you... The Clippers, I think, pose the biggest threat to beat the Suns. I still, th- I think the Suns and the against the Thunder and the Timberwolves, I think it would be a dog fight, and I don't know who I'd bet on. I bet on the Clippers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Out of those three teams, I take the Clippers the best chance to beat the Suns in a series. You don't series. like the Oklahoma City Thunder beating the Phoenix Suns? Yeah, I, just don't I don't, try, I don't, I don't trust them. them. I don't trust them. They haven't done it yet. Next year, once they do and they advance, they go to Western Conference Finals. Well, technically, yeah, the Phoenix I'll Suns haven't the, either. I'll buy the stock. The Phoenix Suns haven't either. But I know what, how capable those guys are, and I know that. Kevin they, Durant has. Yeah, Kevin Durant has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he has his reasons. They may be flawed, but he has them.
and that's okay. And I think they'll be. I don't think when <laughs> if those match up, I don't think it'd be. I think the Suns as a seven or eight seed, I think they'd be favored in a lot of those games. So I think I the odds makers you. and the guys making the spreads uh, also feel this way. I totally agree with you on paper. On paper. Yeah. In reality, it's just not happening. We we hadn't seen and it. And by the way, this is awesome. They hadn't had a I've stretch of games where we like, okay, this who this this is the Phoenix Suns team. We right. I don't were. remember a playoff yet. year where the one through eight is is just as interesting as the four through five. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, I like, agree. This is awesome. No, even it's a going play to be in, fun. Even a play in a forty win team. Kings, Mavs, Lakers, <laughs> Warriors. Yeah, I will watch the Lakers every are a forty win team games. right now. Like, play in's almost unfair, actually. Yeah. Like somebody, these guys are gonna go home. And those four awesome. play in teams would fin would get home court in the Eastern Conference right now, outside of the Bucks and the and the Celtics. You know what I mean? Those those teams would finish yeah. third or fourth in the Eastern Conference. Conference. Well, it's too bad. Besides the Warriors, I don't trust them. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the Eastern Conference because there is a game over there we need to talk about. Wizards, Bulls, uh, <laughs> Jordan Poole and Alex Caruso. Hey. Just getting a little snippy here. Caruso did get a flagrant hey. one. Okay. A flagrant one only? Uh-huh. I feel like he almost should get tossed for this. Yeah. You think so? I mean, it's not exactly a I mean, basketball like was, play. Feels like it was both ways, though, no? Isn't it crazy if this didn't happen? There's no shot we're talking about this game. No, we're not talking about <laughs> it. Although the Wizards do have the longest win streak right now in the East at three games. Wow. Go to my vacation with you. Go to break. Just roll the commercial. Wait, no comment? I mean, there's a big Caruso pool well, rivalry? I think it honestly was a flag like too. I love Caruso, and I think I think Jordan pulled down. I think he almost flopped a little bit in the beginning. It wasn't that physical for Poole to start this, but that wasn't a basketball play. He damn near he tackled him. I mean, Lou says, who cares? So I think that is where we take a break. <laughs> That's where the mark is. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a little you buying that on Run It Back. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back, yeah. run it up, run it back. Yeah, yeah. You buying that? All right, Lou. We're gonna, ow, we're gonna start with you. <laughs> uh, this, is a, red this is a weird one for me. Um, ESPN's Mike Greenberg, Greeny said that <sighs> UConn could make the play-in tournament in the Eastern Conference. And by the way, Greeny's not a clickbait guy. I'm gonna, I wanna preface yes, he that. Is. No, he, he really now. isn't. Yes, he is. I now work with the is. dude. But he said it, Lou. What do you think? You buying that? It's full of shit. Damn. You know, <laughs> so as it, as it stands, Greeny, UConn can beat the Atlanta Hawks tonight. I mean, I'd like to see it. UConn might can lose they, this can round they compete in the NCAA with the, the Chicago Bulls right now? Miami Heat are in the play-in. Can they beat the Miami well, Heat? Well, that's, I mean, that's a tricky one. They might not even win the NCAA championship. I don't have a winner. probably though. won't. Let alone compete for a play-in spot in the National Basketball Association. This is this is crazy. Green. Why are y'all so sensitive when we bring up these college Well, this is just because it's a it's because we work very hard at being professional athletes for people to wake up and think Those student kids athletes work are hard? gonna be the best Ooh, player. They still go to class. The best we player on UConn wouldn't play on the Detroit Pistons right now. So how the hell would this college basketball team be any of these teams Levels. that are in contention to make the NBA playoffs? This Levels. is just stupid. This is ignorant. And I don't know that's the guy. Makes You're the saying he's not so I love Greedy. Because that's the, it seems that's very the click, It seems very clickbaity. But, and when I tell you he is not click, look, I could the, give you a list of 20 fine. dudes that are clickbaity. The Pistons and the Wizards would beat we'll give the UConn Huskies that, by 25 points. But this take is points. ridiculous. The, the Wizards and the Pistons would beat them by 25 points, and it wouldn't even be close. They would run them out the gym. I've seen better UConn teams. I wish scientists would work on this simulator thing that I would like done, so we could actually put these arguments to rest. Like, how would this work? No, let's just line it up. Find the, find the, the starting five for UConn. Come to UCLA in the summer and see if you can. I would love it. Beat some of these teams. It's just, you could charge money for it that. It would never happen. Would beat so the hell out of like this. They, they could just say it. It's, 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 it's one of the most. That 35 second ever. shot clock ain't gonna cut it. Damn, Greeny pissing off the NBA today and not have that on the old yeah. bingo card. All right, well, I'm glad this next one's coming up. Um, the play in. They're gonna beat <laughs> Jimmy Butler in the heat. Oh, well, you're now. picking the heat, too. I mean, that well, is, they're in the play in. He I said, know, he but said that's it, not me. To answer your question, hell no, we're not buying Okay, so the hell no. The 76ers, to the, first the 76ers, one. they're gonna beat the 76ers. Without Embiid? Maybe. Uh, I'm, just, oh. I'm kidding. God. Here we go. Sensitive. Catavius Caldwell Pope said a healthy Suns team is the Nuggets' biggest threat. Huh, weird. We kind of just talked about that, but. <laughs> it's coming from a Nuggets player this time. Hello, I That's just said this. They are terrifying because we know how Terri good they can be. Again, nobody fears the Thunder. Nobody fears the Timberwolves until they show it to us and prove it to us. I would love to be coming up here next year and saying, wow, the Thunder, they took that step. 
I believe in them. I think they're the favorite to win it all this year because of what they did last season. They haven't done that yet, so yes, I think the Suns as a team, they have the talent, they have the big, they have shooting, they have defensive capability. They have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. That is yeah. hard to beat no matter what their record is for four games. That's very, very hard to do. So Casey, players know, uh, players okay. know. He's gloating, he's like, Casey Peace this, did it. No, we, Play, oh yeah. I agree. Dude, that's incredible. The that's Phoenix incredible Suns source. are a scary team on paper. My problem is, when does it translate to the games? And the playoffs have, would be the only right answer. I would hope so. I, I want to see it. I want them to be one of the more entertaining teams that we can watch in the playoffs. I just hadn't seen it up until this point. So I understand KCP's position. But Nothing wrong with Lou being a prove it guy. No, it's fine. Yeah, like you're like you're into like words and stuff, and he's into, I like, want prove the Thunder it. to prove it. He wants the Sun. He wants yeah, us. Okay we both. That. We just want to see it. We I just, just want to see it. I we just, just want to see it. Yeah, I'm buying it though. I, I I can understand it. I mean, I can't. How could you disagree that he said it about his own team? It. It's, it's hard to argue. Uh, Lou Isaiah Thomas said Stephon Marbury <laughs> should be in the Hall of Fame. Are you buying that? I'm buying. It. I think I think Stephon Marbury had a Hall of Fame career, you know. But this comes down to reputation. It got a little weird at the end. Sure. Um for Starberry and, and it was some of the antics and stuff. And, and you know how our sports media likes to kind of run with things, you know. Lucky for him, he played pre-social media. You know, I think. Oh, man. At, at the end of his run, it, it, it got very interesting. And that led to him being legendary in China, having his own statue in China and going over there, changing the game, changing basketball culture and, and creating something very special with his shoes and everything. I think he's a Hall of Fame guy, so I'm buying. Two-time All-Star, two-time third-team NBA, All-NBA. There's a lot of guys that have done that that aren't guys that in, are in guys the Hall of Fame. There's guys in that's done less, though. There's oh, what? That's good there's one. guys in the Hall of Fame that have done less than that. Yeah, but there's also a lot of guys that have done that that aren't. So I think it's a fringe. I think it's a conversation, but I, as I... He's I, in the conversation? Yeah, he's okay, in the good. conversation. So are you I like Luca for MVP. I just <laughs> You're the conversation. Do you like him in a, Yes or no? No. Okay. I know. All right, not buying it. Fair enough. Like, I'd rather, like, Blake Griffin. To, like, there's there's a lot of other players, I think, that have had that kind of resume with less issues than, than him that deserve What the issues got to do with it? I think that's it's so, all That's what I'm saying. It's a, is it about the issues? Is it about some I of think the stuff a, that happened sometimes at the that end of the His turn. best there athletes are two-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA third team at, at Hall of Fame. Right, but those are the stats. But you can, you're can you a basketball player. You can look out there and see the impact that he had. Yeah, he was great. He was, I loved him. I, he was great. But it's Hall of Fame, I think, has gotten a little watered down if we're talking two-time All-Stars in the Hall of Fame. I think that's, a lot of Halls of Fame have gotten a little bit wonky. Two-time All-Star? It's, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's getting weird. What, um, here you go. Clay Thompson said that Jonathan Kaminga might be the best athlete in the NBA. Chandler, are you buying that? I mean, he's a freak. You, you see some highlights. He punches on people. He's so athletic. You look at guys like Zion and Ja and Anthony Edwards. LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah, LeBron James. <laughs> but man, this kid is a freak, and he's long, and he's tall, and he's athletic. So yeah, uh, yeah why not? I'm buying it. He's young. Like, no, Once you add the word best, obviously I'm that not, opens it I'm up. I'm not but. buying. I think this comes from things that they probably see behind the scenes at practice and all of that. But during games, he, we don't have those a bunch of wow moments when it comes to Jonathan Kaminga. Last season So when you hit. talk about the best of something, yeah. that's a high standard. Uh, I'm not rolling. Well, I've seen best. LeBron James be the best athlete on the floor for two decades. Yeah, that's still crazy. And he's still one. in the NBA. So Until he lying. said this, and when you asked me the most athletic guys, I wouldn't have said his name. There it you know is. I mean? That's what I'm but saying. But now that he says his name, I'm like, yeah, I can see it. He's is he that. in the conversation? He's in the combo. Okay. He's in the combo. He's in the conversation. This uh, guy's standard <laughs> today is all over the place, <laughs> man. He's, he's top five. <laughs> he's top five. It five. changes. Uh, Lou, Shaq said that Anthony Edwards reminds him of a young D Wade and a young Kobe. Are you buying that? Um. Let me, I, want, I just want a sample. Let me see. Because I, I like the D-Wade comparison. You do like that. I do like okay. the, the, the style of play. He he has a lot of D-Wade. Um, but... Kobe is different. Kobe is different. I think that's something that uh, Ant-Man can... He can get himself to. He can yep. get himself to that place. Um, I don't I don't see that one yet. I do see D-Wade, how he plays. He's a slasher. Can shoot or puts a lot of pressure on people at the rim. Uses his strength to his, um, to his advantage. Kobe was different. Kobe was a stone cold killer. So, uh, sample size. So maybe D Way with a splash. He did say young Kobe. Does that help a little Kobe. bit? Okay, young. Is I mean, a, like young, a, young, young is a where keyword. he's confident. He's gonna take a lot of shots. He believes he's the best player on the earth. Oh, I, yes. see, yeah, I, mean, I see the similarities. Young. I like that you put young there. I, I like this. Okay. I'm buying this. All right, with 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 that. Thank you, Chandler. I take it. I'm buying. Okay, we're buying it. Yeah. Woo! 
Ooh, we, can, we agree today. on something. Finally. All right. Chandler LeBron said that Steph and Iverson are the two Here we biggest go. <laughs> influential <laughs> Look, we guys on one thing. in the NBA since well, yeah, he let's started watching. The mic watching. is mine first, too. Go. Here's the thing. I think Steph Curry changed the game of okay. basketball. I think every kid in the world wants to shoot from half court and wants to become a three-point shooter because of Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Allen Iverson changed the game from the dress code, how he dressed, the do-rag, the cornrows, how his style, the baggy clothes. Yes, that point. The most influential guy in the NBA is probably Michael Jordan, who's the oh, job man, I who's the logo, doing. the biggest brand in the world, the arguably the best player of all time. Guy, he was saying no one wants to be like Michael Jordan. I'm like, there's literally a saying that says, it's "Well, want to be like Mike." That everybody By wants the way, to be Michael Jordan. I'm giving you the LeBron's floor. LeBron's not going to say yeah, Michael Jordan. Come on, keep going. Huh? Keep you going. You know, there's no world in which LeBron James is going to say Michael Jordan. See, I think he should. And, and again, these are both good answers. When I think of the game of basketball, and maybe not kids now that are obsessed with Steph Curry. Kids. But I think when people think basketball, when they think NBA, they think influential. They think Michael Jordan. Everyone thinks he's the GOAT besides the new LeBron people. No one thinks Steph Curry and Allen Iverson are the GOAT as good as they are. So when I'm thinking of influence and production and everything and the brand of Jordan and Jumpman, that's just, to me, that's hard to beat. He's the most famous, biggest basketball star ever, and he didn't even play in the era with social media and all this stuff now. Can you imagine if he played now with Can TikTok? Can I go now? Play, yeah, yes, sure. you can. Your mom probably has a pair of Yeezys. Whoa. Does that mean she likes Kanye West? <laughs> She'll leave Terry Parsons out. Yeah, <laughs> Terry doesn't have Listen, Yeezys. Does, does that mean that she likes Kanye West? No, the she does No, she has. You know, she has. She has Jordan. She does not have Yeezys. We'll FaceTime her right now. But a thousand percent, she has Michael Jordan shoes. Listen, kids. Did kids want to be like Mike in the nineties? They absolutely did. Yes. Yeah, I did. You did. Like, but right? Kids that are that were born in the two thousands. They know. They have an idea of who Michael Jordan was because of their parents. They, Absolutely. They just know the shoes because they're. They know the them. brand. It, it's yeah. not. It's not directly related to the person. It's not directly related to basketball. What Michael Jordan did on a basketball floor. When it comes to influence, these kids. I'm. I'm in these AU gyms every weekend. All of them are shooting from half court. Mm -hmm. All of them are shooting three pointers, turning around before the shot is up. Everybody in the NBA has tattoos, cornrows, the whole thing, jewelry. All of that comes from Allen Iverson. On the basketball side, how the the whole game, how the entirety and all these analytics, this is a Steph Curry influence thing. So when we talk about influence, I'm definitely agreeing with this generation, Steph Curry and Allen Iverson, biggest they come. Now, Michael Jordan did have his impact, was the most influential, okay. but it moves on. It grows. And I guess generation, there's different when it's you're talking about that, It's generational. It's a generational thing. Okay, you don't think there's kids now that want to jump from the free throw line and stick their tongue out and still want to be like They Mike? don't. Where are they? They shoot from half court? By, by the way, the era of... <laughs> this where, are, where are they? Can I say this? The argument would be one thing if he just had said stuff. But he brings in Allen Iverson, so the era is represented. Well, by the way, it's Allen just Iverson, not Michael he Jordan. changed the whole. Like David Stern had to change the literally dress code. One hundred percent. That's influence. Yeah, like, That's influence. That, I, that makes sense. And again, I understand what you're saying with basketball wise. Not people emulate. Not as many people emulate their their games as Michael Jordan. We're talking right? about you. You're holding your argument on a Jordan brand. Yeah, because it's the biggest brand, and I think he's the... He's, I, and he's, that's what we agree. Michael Jordan. That's what we agree. He is Michael Jordan, but that brand stands alone. That brand is not a direct correlation of Michael Jordan to this day. If that's the case, kids will be wearing the, the Jordan 30s or 33s or 38s or whatever. I, it, it's just timeless. Like, the Jordan They're not timeless. In. When have you When have you bought a pair of Jordans that haven't been retroed? I don't know a pair of Steph Curry's. These kids do. You don't? And I guarantee you, the same kids that have them, they at least have a pair of MJ's. Retroed. Fine. That's not the, the new ones. All. Not the new ones. No, no one wears Team Jordans, but I guarantee Why the not? same kids the 11s or the 4s. That's they influence. Have all those. That's influence. Michael Jordan, the Jumpman logo is more famous than the NBA logo. I agree with you. The Jumpman logo. We're talking about but Michael Jordan. But it Jordan's. had to come from somewhere. Maybe they don't know why it's influential, but the influence comes from Michael Jordan. Can you Jordan. imagine him nowadays? With Absolutely. It, start, and it starts and everything. He'd be he would, times more famous he would than hate these it dudes. So We're saying that like Michael Jordan is, like Michael Jordan is still Michael Jordan. Yeah, but if he was having to be Michael Jordan, the player right now, oh. He'd be looking at some possible suspensions, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Lou, Paul Pierce, he, I love it when it starts with Paul Pierce said. Mm. He said, James Harden is a bigger superstar than Kawhi Leonard. Are you buying that? I'm buying. Me too. Yeah, I'm buying. So when you talk about superstar, that's everything. That's on the court, off the court. Kawhi Leonard doesn't care to be a personality. James Harden is a much bigger superstar when it comes to the everything that he represents. I'm buying. Yeah, James Harden's a 
he, jo- is it James, just because we James Harden's a full blown celebrity? Kawhi like Leonard is like James Harden goes to the you know fashion weeks and Met- he is he embraces <laughs> that role of being a star and hanging yeah. out with rappers and doing all that stuff. Kawhi Leonard doesn't. He doesn't care. He lives in Orange County and takes a chopper to practice, for God's sakes. He could care less. You're not going to see Kawhi Leonard at Craig's tonight. You're going to see James Harden in the trendiest, <gasps> coolest we place. We are? Yeah. Is Craig still in? Kawhi's a helicopter guy. How oh, interesting. Huh? He's a, he's a chopper guy. I know. Why? I, don't, why? Yeah. I, don't I like just said that. I'm saying he takes a chopper. He doesn't care. He doesn't want to be seen. He's not going to. Are you helicopter guys? I'm a helicopter. I've never been in a helicopter. Never. Dude, you and I, because we don't like you know, to fly. We travel. We're not doing that. We're not. We can't, can't I can't even block get a block that. shot That's on ridiculous. set. <laughs> Still don't play defense. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Victor Wembanyama said Rudy Gobert deserves Defensive Player of the Year this season, but after that, it's no longer his turn. You buying that this is Rudy mm, Gobert's I, last yeah. season? <laughs> this is the coolest thing he's ever said so far. This is awesome. I'm buying it. It's probably true too like i believe that he's going to take over this award i think he could run off five six seven in a row of them he's got that potential Crazy. he's got that talent they know each other obviously from france too and, and this is uh, i think this is friendly banter but it's true rudy gobert he's gonna win it this year he deserves to win it. he's had a great year but i think it's i think it's wimby's for the taking i think the whole league is wimby for the taking let alone defensive player of the year Lou? like that yeah i like I it i like it i'm buying it's gonna be a fun ride yeah i like it Whee! Okay, that's all I have to uh, add to that. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we run come back, up, more Run It Back. That's all I got. Run it back. I just looked at your shoe. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Yeah. Run it. <laughs> uh, fill the lane time. You know, instead of that, it's actually fill the blank. Get it? Okay, the game has been set. Nikola Jokic Chandler is a top <laughs> player of all time. He's a top 20 player of all time. And it's only going to keep going once he gets his third MVP this season ahead of SGA. (laughs) It's hard. Again, there's a lot of guys with great careers that played a really long time. I'm actually kind of looking at the list, too, and I'm through the 20, and he's not on here. What? Yeah, he's not on here. Of all time. But, like, I, again, I have my takes on older players, and I respect them, and I love what they've done. But I think Jokic now, the stats he puts up, the the MVPs, him getting three MVPs alone should put him in the top 15. That's crazy. He's not on a top 75 team so far. So okay, if but they redid they, it. Yeah, it they redid it. it. They would definitely. Where is he on this list? Somebody. But or until then. <laughs> really? So you're going off that list? <laughs> yeah, why not? You know that it's list. 75 isn't guys that, that are at least. Rick Barry. You're not putting seven. Jokic in the top 75 of all time. Top 75? I'm putting him in the top 12. I'm talking possibly top 12. Oh, I'm talking about him. I put him top 50 of all time. Top 50. Top 50? Yeah, 50. Well, you got, you got Bob Pettit. Are we going to do all the 49 before him? Let's go. Okay. No, George Mikan, yeah, he was good. Oh, we're gonna poop on the old guys now. No, Mikan. I'm just saying, like Jokic, yeah. right now, Jokic. I'm just saying, top fifty. That's just that's that's a, not an educated top guess. Fifty, Giannis is there's there's ten guys in the NBA right now that are top fifty. AD. I'm on your yeah. listen. AD's on the list, isn't he? Giannis, Kevin Durant, LeBron, Steph Curry, Jokic, Embiid's probably top fifty for God's sakes. What do you mean, Jokic? Yeah, we gotta is redo the list. 50. Yeah, that re- that list changes every year. Problem is they didn't. Luca's they top added fifty. To, okay, here we go. Where were you? Where were you, where were you rank Jokic in centers alone? I think I love Shaq. I think he's the most dominant. Kareem's career, Hakeem Olajuwon. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. And then, by the way, I'm probably going him. Wilt's got a crazy resume, but like. A, so you're putting him top top five center of all top time. Top five centers yeah. of all time. That's so if he's a top five center that's, of all that's time, his then opinion. he's one hundred percent top. 20. I think he's, yeah. Hakeem is a I think it's still player. a lot of work to do, but I, but I think he finishes top 20 for sure. Okay. Okay. Will Chamberlain. I think he finishes top 20 Bill for Russell. sure, but it's a lot of work to do. Bill Russell. Fair enough. Lou, Lou wants to see more, and that's... How much problem. more do you want? A f- fifth, fourth, I mean, sixth we're, MVP? We're, we're, I mean, another he has, two, cham- he has another two MVPs and one championship. That's pretty good, but pretty Shaq... Good. Shaq is Shaq. He's got like three. Kim Olajuwon is a Kim Olajuwon. Okay, but Anthony Tim Davis Duncan is, is Tim on Duncan. this list. Tim is a power about. forward. He's the best power forward of all time. Right, but I'm not just talking about centers no more. So we talking about, about all everything. time. Yeah, we talking about everything. Who's so it's, it's guys off the top of my head. Dirk. That, that, that are four and fives. Dirk. Dirk. Ooh, Dirk. Or Jokic, better career. Give me Dirk. Right so you now. want one MVP and one is, championship Dirk over is done. one championship and three MVPs? He doesn't have three. He got he two. He's to gonna have three. But he doesn't have it. Lou, can you just join us? It's on the way, dude. No. I'm not going. It's on the way, dude. It's, it's on in the way. route. It's, it's totally done. All right, fine, Lou. Which player is the most underrated in the NBA this season? Got to be Sabonis. Not anymore, though. The way we're gassing about. It got to. Okay, gotta then be we got to go to the Pelicans then, because that's the other team we never talked about. 
So most somebody underrated. on that. But most most underrated player got to be Sabonis. No all star, and you know you lead the league in triple doubles. Nobody's talking about it. Just break a record for double doubles. Nobody's talking about yeah. it. Don't make an all star team. Probably is not gonna be in the MVP conversation. That ranks as underrated to me. It's Sabonis, or maybe even Fox. You know who else is killing this year? We're not talking about all. Is Kyrie Irving? The guy's having an unbelievable season. He's going. He's That's so good. famous. Yeah, but, put, give give Kyrie. But a Kyrie spot. Irving has it's been, been unbelievable one. this year, and just hooping and being a, very very productive. But yeah, that's it's probably a bonus. It's probably a bonus. Uh, Chandler, picking from all the current NBA players, who would be the best big two you could put together? Now, what does this mean? Because I was like, is this like a two on two game? Like, because a duo. Maybe like no, you just Shaq two people. Like you could literally like, like pick. Jokic and Steph Curry to me would be nasty. But again, if, if then if I wanted to play the two, two. two on two, that's though, a pretty like, good two. Like Giannis and KD, or they, they no, would no, beat no. them two on two because you know who's going to guard them. But if I had my duo going forward in their prime or right, whatever, right now I'm doing Steph and Jokic. Give me Wimby and KD. I just want to see two seven footers. See, like they would probably beat <laughs> Steph and Jokic two on two. <laughs> just give me two seven footers that could do everything. That's a lot of length. That's a lot of length. Easy, cowboy. Yeah, let's settle down. Um, <laughs> all right, which player, Lou, is under the most pressure for the Hold final? Hold on, you skipped one, because I would think all time two players, I would go Steph and Shaq. Like, what's the I didn't deal? skip it. Let me host the show. If your computer wasn't a prop, <laughs> you'd see we moved on already. But you have a computer that's not even turned on in front Who, of you. What's a better duo than Steph and Shaq, though? Like, I <laughs> thought that one was interesting. <laughs> we don't have time for that, because you're yapping over here. Oh, go you. on. No, no. Turn your computer on, for the love of everyone. Oh. Steph and Shaq's a nasty duo. I like Steph and Shaq, <laughs> of all time. That, that's all right, what you Michelle, wanted to get in? On. That's you wanted. Jesus. <laughs> you Pardon me. Like, do you feel better now? Like I do. You got the important information. I was out. just thinking about that. I'm like, Steph and Shaq. Okay, so now we're going to break? Yeah. Now we don't you get to answer the other questions. <sighs> yeah, we're going to go to break. I, I don't know what's happening. Let's right take now. a breather. We're going to teach Chandler how to turn his computer on moving Are forward you going to teach? so that it actually does something. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Run it back, yeah. run it all, the run it back, yeah, yeah, run it all, run it back, run it all. Yo, PF. Get in all the new NBA buzzer beater ankle breakers and tomahawk jams with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. The app's easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays and find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. Download the app, make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA, which is what we're going to do. Props Nailed right it. now. So Beetle, Taylor, you're a pro. I know, it's like I you are really good at that. Damn. You can really, really read. Yeah, I've been reading for a really long time. <sighs> All right, we got Congrats. a prop party. Do you remember what you had? I do, because it's right there. <laughs> I like the Kings money line. Uh, it is at home. Both teams played like last it. night. And I'm going with the Sabonis train here. I think he gets a triple double. I like uh, I like Olympic. Kings money line too, but I think Kyrie is going to have Ooh, I like uh, that. great night distributing the basketball. I got him over seven assists. I'm going a little different. Or six assists, I'm sorry. I wanted to, to make something a little splashy, make it fun for everybody. I'm going Luca with the first basket. Oh. That's how you get rich. That's not how it works. Okay. Uh, and Fox <laughs> over two and a half. Plus 450, though. <laughs> but that's how I make my I like that. Coaches always give a guy that's not going to get a bunch of shots the first basket. But, I, do think think but I think play. he'll just take it. I do think they win the jump ball. Ooh, so I think they have a good chance of, of you know, they're going to get the first jump. attempt. Wow. They're going to get the first offensive Can possession. Can I do that? All right. So bonus ain't winning the jump ball. Side bets. Let's All right, tomorrow we got Kenny Beecham, John Rothstein, perfect timing for college basketball. Kenny Beecham. Enjoy your Tuesday. See y'all tomorrow. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all.